Hi everyone and welcome to Experiment Monday. I'm Catherine and I'm a scientist and instructor with Science for Scientists. One of my favorite things to do in the lab is to use big microscopes to study tiny things to learn about their structure and how they're put together. We can learn about how things are put together without microscopes too. One fun thing to do at home is to grow and study crystals. We know that crystals look cool, but what are they anyway? We know they're solids, definitely not liquids or gases, but there are a lot of solids that aren't crystals. What makes crystals special? Crystals are an especially organized form of solids. They're made of identical particles, either molecules or atoms, which means they're a pure substance. And those particles are arranged on a 3D grid called a lattice, so that each one has the exact same environment. Each particle has the same number of neighboring particles in the same positions and at the same distances away from each other. So if you were able to shrink down and walk around inside a crystal, you would get lost really easily because the space around every particle would look just the same as the space around every other one. There are a lot of different crystals around us, some natural and some man-made. Geologists can learn about the conditions under which rocks were formed by looking at the types and sizes of the crystals in them. Engineers can make crystals of silicon into chips that make computers work. Biologists can crystallize proteins in order to study their shape and structure with x-rays. And we can grow crystals at home, starting right in our own kitchens. I decided to try growing crystals with salt and with sugar. Here's what I used. Sugar, salt, water, a small pan, glass jars, string, and something to tie the strings to. I also used blobs of aluminum foil as weights for some of the strings. For the sugar, I dipped strings in sugar syrup and let them dry before I used them. One trustworthy source suggested this would give the sugar crystals an easy place to start growing. The first step is to dissolve the salt or sugar in water. This is one way that crystallization happens in nature, too. When a substance dissolves, it doesn't change chemically. Sugar water still tastes sweet, salt water still tastes salty, but water is separating the particles. Then we can encourage them to form a crystal when they get back together. To make solutions, I heated up some water and then added the salt or sugar and then stirred until the solution was clear again. I kept doing this until no more would dissolve when there was just a little solid sugar or salt in the bottom of the pan. A solution like this is called a saturated solution. Once I had a saturated solution, I carefully poured it into glass jars and then lowered the strings in. Safety first, if you're trying this at home, ask an adult for help with the experiment, especially the sugar solution, and use hot pads to protect yourself from burns. Because the crystals will take several days to grow, I wanted to set up several conditions at once. I wanted to see the different shapes that the salt and the sugar crystals would have, but I also wanted to ask, did it make any difference for either the sugar or the salt crystals if I grew them in a dark, cool environment or a bright, warm environment? And I also wanted to know if coating the string in sugar would really help the sugar crystals. I set up one jar of sugar solution and one of salt solution in a dark, cool basement room. I set up another salt solution on a windowsill and another sugar solution on a desk. Then I had a little extra sugar solution and an extra string, so I put a bonus experiment on a windowsill over my sink. Then it was time to be patient and check on them each day to see what was happening. Be sure to ask your adult where the best place is to let your crystals grow undisturbed. Now let's look at our results. We'll start with salt. This is the setup that was growing in a bright and warm environment on a windowsill. We can see small feathery crystals that grew right away after a day and got a little bigger on day two, but they didn't grow very fast or ever get very big after that. This is salt in a cool, dark environment. Again, small feathery crystals grew in the first couple days, but here then they slowed down and maybe even started to shrink. Here's sugar in that same dark, cool environment. This setup used the string that was coated in sugar. 
The crystals took a while to get started, but then they grew steadily, and they look pretty good. Here's sugar in a bright and warm environment, even though there's no direct sun. And this one uses an uncoated string. And there are sugar crystals at the surface of the solution and stuck to the jar, but there is nothing on the string. This is another setup with sugar growing in a bright, warm place, this time using the sugar-coated string. Here, the crystals start growing slowly, but then grow faster and get much bigger. The crystals that grew on the string are also nice and clear, even though some of the crystals at the top of the solution and stuck to the jar are kind of lumpy. This was clearly the best way to grow crystals. So I was able to answer two of my questions. A brighter, warmer environment does make for faster sugar crystal growth. And the coated string really does help to get the sugar crystals started growing. Thanks for joining me for Experiment Mondays with Science from Scientists. I hope you had fun learning about crystals. I know I had fun doing the experiment. If you do an experiment of your own, we would love to see pictures of your crystals. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us too. Have a great week. Happy science.